Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome to the Honest Trailer Commentaries for The Flash 2023. Wow, what a long, strange trip it's been, but we've cool. arrived. Um, we're, we're at home today. Uh, uh, Taco's got some health health issues that we're monitoring, but he's okay, right? He's okay. He's okay. okay. La la he last week, uh, Taco had, we, we think it was a mini stroke, which apparently oh. in older chihuahuas is, is relatively common. Uh, he seems to be bouncing back great. He has not had another one. But I don't, I don't want to leave him alone just a few days after he had a stroke. Got it. Um, and, and also, for those of you asking, Danielle Radford still uh, contributing to the show, but there is some uh, confusion over exactly what is and isn't SAG uh, friendly. And she is a, what, associates member or some kind of SAG affiliated she, person. She's pre, she's pre SAG. And, yeah. and, and it's probably not that it's against the rules because this isn't, studios don't pay us to be like, make fun of our movies when they hit. <laughs> VOD. So this isn't directly <laughs> promotional anyway, but it's I think it's close enough that she was a little yeah, uh, uh, out of an abundance of caution. Daniel Redford sends her regards. Uh, but we will keep you posted on that and uh, on the strike and um, Stephen Amell's thoughts on uh, He just on the he walked it back. Did you see? He just walked it back. He, he a did? Publicist, <laughs> yeah, a publicist got to him first thing this morning and so now he's saying like and it's fairness to him. He is pointing out he was like on stage for an hour answering questions. It wasn't like this was a statement he made to the press. He he may have just misspoken in the moment mm. on stage, but yeah, he's totally walking back. Supports the union, supports the strike. You'll see him on the picket line. Uh, he has not failed this city. <laughs> well, speaking of mistakes and flubs and things that people wish mm -hmm. they could have walked back, The Flash 2023. Oh my, oh my gosh. Oh. Now this is a much maligned movie for a lot of reasons. Um, and it's been uh, in development for at least eight years, maybe longer, um, or we've been reporting on it for at least eight years. We've been, you and I have personally been talking about it for at least eight years now. <laughs> and it's finally here. Um, and it's amazing that this is the version that actually, that actually came out. Um, I will say that uh, obviously this got trashed and everybody hated it. Uh, or, uh, that was the word on the street uh, uh, for me walking in. And I liked the first 30 minutes of this movie. I thought it was ridiculous. I'm like, oh, he's putting babies in the microwave. This is, this is silly and stupid on purpose. That's yeah. kind of fun. It's like a big cartoon. This and is then, a bunch of different movies all put together. Like it's obvious yeah. that there were like every concept they had during the last 10 years for a Flash movie, like at least a together. scene or two of it got into this. Uh, and I will say, I agree with you. The the movie that feels like it's just like the Snyderverse is ongoing, where it's just a bunch of DC heroes teaming up. To They're working together to stop crimes. Gotham from some, like a building is collapsing. Oh, we'll get into that. Reason. Yeah. Uh, so, but that's the worst, at least it's, it's better because it feels more just like a superhero story, you know, like problem in the city. They got to save people. They got to team up. They got to use their powers. Like that's kind of what the, you know, that's the bread and butter stuff. Yeah. So um, from the time he goes into the terror dome onwards, which I believe is around minute 30. The chrono bowl. The chrono bowl. Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> uh, I hated it. Um, oh. It was really downhill from there. So yeah. um, I don't know. I almost feel, I, I think we should just launch right in it. If you haven't uh, seen the last couple of days, we're going to do deleted scenes. We're going to do Q&A. So put those uh, in the chat as they come in. And then we'll tease you with next week's honest trailer, which is um, it's a real three way competition for the worst superhero thing of the year. Yeah, the, we, race, we, the race we, is we, heating up. We did so just to just to get this one out. We did Quantumania, which I was sure when we did it was like, well, I'm not going to hate any comic book thing more than this <laughs> this year. We've been blasted into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, <laughs> But then, yeah, uh, this week's uh, Flash is like, wow, maybe maybe this even takes the crown. And then next week is is even another contender. It's crazy. It's getting out of hand. Oof. Wild, wild time for um, for every every superhero uh, content creator, because, man, if you are liking if you're just uncritically liking the Flash, Quantumania and next week's thing. I know studios don't pay influencers and people, but I just wonder what type of brain leads you to like what's been coming out recently <laughs> of, of these three things. Uh, one out of three, sure. Two out of three. Uh, but if you like all three things we're, we're talking about, wow. Okay. Well, we'll we, I, I, I your want consult, your- Yeah, consult, uh, your, consult your physician. Yeah. Let's if just dive I, right into the honest trailer. Because symptoms persist for three weeks, uh, you know. <laughs> Let's see what's uh let's see what's on the docket. We'll we'll stop and start as it goes because this is a long movie and I think we'll have a lot to say about it. So let's watch the Australia. My God. 
eight hours, right? Eight and a half hours, something like that. Not <laughs> like I can show up. <laughs> You've seen Ezra Miller star in bar fights, restraining orders, grooming allegations, felony burglaries, and choke slam videos. Did you want to fight? Is that the deal? Now, see the film that dares you to wonder what dirt Ezra has on Warner Brothers, because this is basically a confession tape. You should seek the services of a mental health professional. The Justice League is not very good at that part yet. Trust me. The Flash. So, pause. I just feel like with Ezra Miller, so many people have been fired for so much less uh, or removed from projects. It's, um, it's also, and, and look, don't take this the wrong way. Obviously, on-screen talent, horrible things you do off-screen, they're not connected. I'm not suggesting one should depend on the other. But, <laughs> let me put just, a, just, but you would think if they're going to put up with someone who is this much of a troublesome presence, they would just be an on-screen dynamo. It would be It'd because be a, they're just- a A-list celebrity that's like opens a movie uh, just Eddie on their Murphy, face alone. Plus, yeah. you know, like like just the most dynamic presence. Like, well, we can't not include this person. Audiences, the camera loves them. Yeah, how are but we going to replace talking... Clarence from the Fantastic right. Beast movie? But <laughs> it seems like, and, and it's not even that Ezra's never given a good. Like, I, you know, we need to talk about Kevin. Good movie. They're solid in that one. But it, it's like these aren't the kinds of performances no other actor could give. You could put a lot of people in this twitchy, nebbishy constantly motor mouth Barry Allen. It's, well, it's what practically all the roles are anyway. Everybody's a sarcastic motor mouth in movies in 2023. <laughs> I just don't get why it has to be this one person. Certainly it's not because they were spending all that time on the CGI. <laughs> like, oh, well, we can't start over. We'd yeah. have to make a, 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 a completely different set of uh, lumpen monstrosities coming out, yeah. of, coming well, out of the guess, chrono bowl. <laughs> we'll talk about the chrono bowl and why it looks like that <laughs> later, I guess. But yeah, I just, it, it, it they're annoying in this movie. And you're like, well, they're annoying already. Just, just, just bring in somebody who's less annoying. <laughs> also not a criminal, but less annoying too. <laughs> I feel like they one. had options given the amount of other times and ways they pivoted on this movie that they were like, but we're riding with Ezra to the bitter end. And the um, bitter at the, at the very yeah. end. Wait, wait till he turns full, wait till they turn full Simon Phoenix, just taking yeah. over entire buildings in downtown LA. And, hijacking buses <laughs> i would watch ezra miller in a demolition man uh reboot, reboot. In, in the simon phoenix role who plays, no, who I, plays I, John I don't know Spartan. He, i think he'll do um uh no um the um the uh who's the i'm an asshole guy the dennis leary role oh right okay yeah yeah <laughs> yeah okay. all right keep let's keep going edgar friendly Yes. Where James Gunn reboots the DC Cinematic Universe for the sixth time? Seventh? I lost count. One of those. Went yeah. to the finish line with this colossal screw up, all about a colossal screw up. But I am pretty obnoxious. That's burned through directors like the weed on Ezra's ranch, where they found a one year old with a bullet in her mouth. Allegedly. Allegedly. And <laughs> the concept of the multiverse, about 10 years too late to be interesting. He's going to save the multiverse. Yeah, man. In the multiverse, there are an infinite number of people who know Peter Parker is Spider Man. Concerning the fate Idiot. of every single world of our infinite multiverse, the Warner Brothers serververse. That's almost <laughs> self aware about how sloppy and stale the concept is. The multiverse. But it is. It's a hot mess. But that won't stop them from using it to defile the corpse of some legends to make a quick buck. It's enough to make you lose faith in humanity. Oh, faith restored. Rare W humanity. Rare W. So, Oz, what I mean, what's your theory for why this was as big of a failure at the box office? Because they certainly went all out with uh with the promotion. They had people, they trotted yeah. out every everyone they could yeah, to say this is the Stephen best movie King, of all time. They, they've destroyed his reputation. Insane, um, yeah. Um, uh, why I, I, why didn't people believe them? Why didn't they show up? I think we're we're in this era where, you know, for, for many, many years leading into the pandemic, uh, you know, the, the idea was the way to get people to the theater was name recognition, brands, you know, like. You might not show up for a random superhero movie, but The Flash from the DC movies, from the Justice League, we've seen those characters, you know that franchise, you're gonna come out. 
And that, like, and that's why everything is, you know, Fast X and the Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, whatever. And for whatever reason, I think it's a few different factors. I definitely think streaming and the idea that these episodic franchises, you can always just check in the latest episode on streaming and audiences just got used to the, it, it started to feel less like I have to get out to the theater every time to see every new installment when there's going to be 10, 20 installments, I'll just wait for Netflix or, or whatever. I think that was a big part of it. Uh, and I think also we're we're just no longer in that era of people going to the theater just to go to the theater. You got to get them. Well, sure, yeah. You got to get them out specifically. They're going to come see this thing that you've sold them on very specifically. There's no more just like, well, this is the number. We'll go see what's at what's playing at three, and we'll go check yeah. out the Flash. And I think a, a lot of these franchises were kind of riding on that sort of energy, and that doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, I think. I, I, you know, I think this didn't do enough to really sell people on this is going to be different than all of the other superhero movies that you've seen. I mean, at this point, cameos and the nostalgia stuff and the legacy stuff is in every movie. So I don't even think that makes it stand out as much as it might have five years ago. Yeah. And their selling point, you know, say what you will about the Snyderverse, uh, but at least it was an ethos. Uh, but, well, <laughs> say, I mean, it, uh, it had it, that selling point of like, if this is the next installment of a franchise, like you wanted to see the next installment, but people, the people who were clued in knew that this was all getting flushed down the toilet anyways. Yeah. So there I was think- no point. There's nothing coming later, I guess Aquaman too, but really there's no reason to uh, invest in this, to continue the journey because you know, it's all about to get reset. And, and the last thing I'll say, and this dovetails with uh, the sort of failure of Indiana Jones this summer too, is I think that, uh executives are are doing some of the age on their nostalgia math wrong I yes 100 percent. i think that a, a guy like indy and a guy like michael keaton batman have a lot of appeal but you got to be like close to my age to remember <laughs> like those are both 89. well to remember the good times yeah well those are both 89 movies. last crusade yeah. and batman 89 uh, you, you know yeah if you're under 40 you you don't remember those movies in theaters that's those are old movies for you and I think, man, you know, you're you're relying on old guys to drive it too much. Like you gotta aim, you gotta aim. We're, we're like 80s nostalgia's done, man. You got we gotta jump to the 90s. I mean, now. the fact that they didn't, it's a huge misread for the the marketing that they didn't focus on Ben Affleck rather than Michael Keatman. If right. Keaton, and if you're and gonna do a Batman uh, right, first promo. Yeah, you're you're selling the dads when you're selling Michael yeah. Keaton Batman, not <laughs> not the kids. And and I don't think you can make a movie like The Flash and make five hundred million dollars if you're just selling to the dads. I mean, maybe like Top Gun Maverick, but not not The Flash. Yeah. Um, okay, let's keep going. You do when your store goes on a massive crime spree. Cast them twice. Wait, that can't be right. Three times. What is going on? Barry Allen one is a whiny little. B- Thanks for saving me from the sinkhole, Flash. And I'm starving, and Curly Hair Girl isn't here, and her name is Sarah, and she has a boyfriend. You hear that? That's my stomach. But after his mom is murdered by someone, I guess Barry, who works in a forensic crime lab, didn't bother to check in on that part. He'll reverse time uh, and meet Barry. <laughs> the, the murder of Barry's mother is bizarrely glossed over, I would say, considering mm. how pivotal a plot point it is. Like, was well, it a you, hit? Yeah. Well, you, yeah, I mean... I, it feels like in another universe, this movie is him solving his mom. Like that's an afterthought. He's like very worried about his dad not getting convicted because he knows his dad is innocent, but he's not very big on who did this. And you would think that would be, cause that would also, if you figured out who did it, that also gets your, your dad out of prison. So it's like, it's weird that that never even comes up that, that like, He's not even like on the phone to serial, like, hey, I got a great case, you know, like it's <laughs> it's just not even a consideration. And the, the the murder itself makes no sense. It's it's she was in her kitchen and in, in a nice somebody suburban. thought it was em- an empty house and ran in, stabbed her and ran. But no, out. yeah. Ran in, planning to rob an entire house, saw a woman there with a kitchen knife and panicked because, oh, my God, uh, Maribel Verdu armed with a kitchen knife. My plans are foiled. Uh so stabs her, murders her in her own kitchen and then runs out without even stealing anything. No evidence, leaving no evidence, not a fingerprint, not a footprint. And, and, and that's, that's the entire crime Case as closed. we know it. That's all we know about it. It's very strange. I think that they were gonna 
reveal that to be, you know, reverse flash or it's a gorilla grod or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think they were really, leaving that for the flash. It really too. should have been gorilla. Grodd. But the fact oh, that he I... never even like scratched the surface of who may have done that. So that's what the whole movie hinge on. Strange. What the whole movie's about, and he's it, it. There's a person out there in the world who ruined your life. He, he killed your your mother while you were in the house, while your dad was gone, and and let your dad go to jail. Like he's not even angry about <laughs> that. He's just upset about oh my dad's gonna you know rot away in prison forever. Yeah, uh, if I can it's only crazy. find the. Uh, yeah, he goes back in time to like switch the tomatoes. Like, no, go back in time to like uh, uh, kick the uh, the right. murderer into the sun. Or even hang out outside your house, watch who goes in, follow that guy home, and now you know who killed your mom. Yeah. Uh, all right, Flash 2. We'll see. <laughs> Keep going. This is the true crime two, podcast. Where growing up with two parents somehow made him more obnoxious. <laughs> I'm <myself>. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them so much. I really do. <laughs> and <laughs> Great. You're leaving me, and now this storm's gonna ruin my day. What is this, hell? Now I'm probably gonna have to move. Why is it so cold? It's the Arctic, Barry. Okay, and the space giant and Mistress Murder are our responsibility, too. I was just doing my laundry. Uh, You're the one it, who came... it, the, the difference between them is very odd, and I don't fully understand how having a two-parent household would make you that annoying <laughs> and uh, isn't it implied that barry one is a virgin but barry two yeah like, no has he, it's sex. not implied he says it yeah he, he, he comes out and says that he's he's and and ezra miller i don't know about barry allen ezra miller 30 years old barry allen maybe we could say a few years cut a few years off of that but that's he's getting up there right yeah it was it was very strange um uh, why he's got the lasso you... of truth. Wonder Woman has the lasso of truth around Barry, and then he he admits that he's never had. Yeah, so it's yeah. But the other one is like going on dates and like has a girlfriend. And well, he's going on a date. We don't he's going on a date. We have not confirmed. There, there is you know, may, may, who, who knows? What were the what were the movie posters on it? They, they had some interesting paraphernalia on his uh, on his house. I noticed one was just a sticker that said "New Metal." Which is mm. how you really know you're gonna like a character. Yeah, <laughs> I just love the genre. That's what the kids were into, man. <laughs> he had a he had a um, Inception poster, I yes, think. That's right. You're so right. I get what because time timey wimey, you know. Yeah, he's that, more into that, the that, that fits in. Yeah, um, and then like yeah, just the Marvel's guilty of this too. It's like the lack of creativity in imagining a multiverse and all the possibilities. Like the biggest thing they can come up with is like different movie castings. They're right. like, oh my God, Eric Stoltz is in Back to the Future. And like different names, like they're like banana bees. Like that's as far as it goes. Or Mar Marvel where it's like pizza comes in a ball. Yeah, like it's, You it's... can do anything and they just use it to kind of reshuffle who's wearing which super suit. Right. And, 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 it really kind of cheapens the entire multiverse concept, which is so broad and makes so many different storytelling possibilities, you know, in, in the, you know, in the mix. And then, yeah, like to, to just make it like, well, here the red lights are green and the green lights are red. It's like, you remember that show Sliders? That's of what it course, yeah. Of. Where every episode of Sliders would be like, it's just like our universe, but Elvis never existed. And like, yeah. I feel like that. Damn it, so close. <laughs> right. I feel like that's the take. And, 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 you know, once or twice as a joke, as a gag, as a bit, sure, fine. But we're getting now to the point where it's just, okay, we keep redoing multiverse. And then it's the same concept over and over again, even down to this movie and across the Spider Verse both do the same. Across the Spider Verse, a lot better. I'm not making that comparison, but. They're both through the like, there are, you can't really change things in the multiverse because there are these like moments that have to happen. Nexus you points, know? if Nexus you will. Point. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Canon you know, events. Yeah. Canon events. Like, they all have one thing. There are like, uh... names for it, but it's like, so we're really, it, we're, we're using the multiverse to continually tell the exact same story. It's not even the multiverses themselves are similar. The, the narratives are similar. Like why? Like do something else with it. Yeah. Maybe he can change things in this one. Let's try it, you know. <laughs> we've just we've just flubbed uh, the whole concept like writ large. I, I think it's time to just tie a bow in it. Um, yeah, no more multiverse movies. At this, yeah. at this point, it's just it's boring to now. When I when I can feel a franchise going that way, I get kind of bored. I I, I want there to be I want there to be more stakes. I want there to be one 
practical reality. It makes stories more involving. Yeah, and and they're, they're like, what stakes could be bigger than like all of existence, every timeline? It's like, well, that's so big that I don't care. Well, and, and you, end, I'm jumping ahead in this movie, but you also end up with with this scenario where what actually happens to the reality in which this movie takes place? Like, oh, it's gone. It's a sliders ending. We're like, oh wait, the the Golden Gate Bridge is blue. Like, I guess I'm still not home. So none of it matters. Um, None of it mattered, but I mean, like, yeah, we're we're spending the whole movie fighting on behalf of a universe that vaporizes. I mean, yeah. that that version of Supergirl is gone for she's murdered by Zod, and then we <laughs> take off from that universe and like, oh, I should never have created this universe to begin with. Like, well, yeah, but now there's billions of people living well, in it. Wasn't there. it funny that George Clooney showed up and then his tooth fell out? That's yeah, funny, but the, right? But does that mean that? that the Ben Affleck universe that the, the franchise spent its entire existence in, all of those also people gone. are gone. Yeah. So we're, we're dead. Like <laughs> we, we, the viewers lived in the Ben Affleck version of the DC universe. So now we're gone. I don't know if that's the one we are living in right Barry's now. Barry's left living us in the, behind. Well, I thought we were the, living in the Robert Pattinson Batman universe currently. <laughs> See, that's where the franchise started. <laughs> He's jumped out of the franchise's own universe into a new universe and left the franchise behind. Yes, it's over. I think it's oh officially dead. And now we're in the Batman room. Well, no, well, Blue Beetle's got to still happen back there. <laughs> I guess. God, don't, I don't leave know. Blue Beetle behind. <laughs> no, James Gunn has said if people like Blue Beetle, he gets to come in. He's he's part of the new one. He'll get to if jump people in. like Blue Beetle. <laughs> Only if people like him. If people don't like him, he's out. Yeah. But no, if fans want, he'll he, he gets to come along into the Superman legacy verse. That means that that this is going to be one of the more self-contained installments of of anything. Oh, sure. If, if he's leaving the door open, like sure. Yeah, I think we'll... George Lopez has that joke about Batman being a fascist. That's probably about it. That's Brad, the only mention. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, all right, let's keep going. And told me that I'm a superhero. What are you doing? Would you stop whining and gross. It's a bit more loose. It hurts. You know where it hurts? In my dick. Okay. Was Grant Gustin that unavailable? How about Christopher Plummer? Weird Al? <laughs> but Barry's not alone. And thank goodness, because two and a half hours of this would be a war crime. You don't stop talking. It's not charming. It's abrasive and exhausting. Michael Keaton is back as a very 71-year-old Batman. This might hurt. When he's not playing the hits with all the enthusiasm of Smash Mouth at a county fair. I'm Batman. How much do you weigh? You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Dads They're are stomping their new balances to that one. And making him eat repeatedly. Eject! Cool. Which is a weird choice for a film that clearly wants to be a Batman movie instead. They even go full Clooney tunes at the end. I like that he's banished to the Batman and Robin verse now. That feels earned. Cool party. So yeah, pause. <laughs> It's one thing to bring back uh, Michael Keaton's Batman, but or in this reality, but it's just it was so incongruous with the movie that he was in that it never felt like you were watching Michael Keaton's yeah. Batman. They, from, they don't they don't do even there's not even one moment where you get a flash of the classic Bruce Wayne we know and love from from Batman and Batman Returns. It feels like a totally different and depressing take on the character. Like, did we not, really see like Gotham? At all, really? I mean, I guess it's his manner, right? They drive, yeah. they take, first of all, they take a cab to Gotham, they get out without paying, which was insane. <laughs> so there's a deleted scene there. Yeah. Uh, but they, you, they pull up outside the manor. And no, then we otherwise- don't see the Tim Burton, we never see the Tim Burton take German expressionist Gotham. We don't even go there. No, no. And it's just like one of those things where seeing Batman in the daytime, much less like an empty battlefield, like he just looks silly. It's just well, not a good. It's also they, we get a they unveil the Batmobile, but then we never see it in action. We see the Batwing, but it's obviously different from the one from the '80s because he's spinning. It does this spin around move now. So it's like they don't even give us the baseline. Like this is what you remember. They give you the dialogue, but none of the visuals. Aesthetically, right. this looks nothing like the. Well, because the, if you take that Burton. Batman, that Batmobile down the streets of Central City, which I'm sure is Vancouver or Georgia or Atlanta, <laughs> yeah. it just looks dumb. It's of like course, a promotional. But, yeah. But it, you, you have to think about these things. Like movies are visual. I, I can't believe I'm <laughs> on a show and I have to say that out loud. 
But if you're going to integrate the 89 Batman with your new movie, you have to kind of design your new movie with that in mind because it has a very specific aesthetic because, you know, Tim Burton is right. kind of <laughs> what he does. That's sort of his whole bit. But also what, what these people love doing, and this is another clue for next week, is that they love bringing people in who you love and then calling them old and washed up and pathetic oh. and then killing them. <laughs> Like that's movies these days. Yeah. And like sometimes, you know, like Logan or whatever, like I get it. The whole movie's built around that the idea. Story and and it, he's going to have this redemptive moment at the end. But yeah, this one is just a, it's a it's just a real bummer. It's just yeah. he, he's just old and he can't be Batman anymore. And he's he's really trying his best, but it's not working out for him. And, and then like, they just smash the bat wing into the side of a force field and then yeah, and, and then kill you, him a couple more times for good measure. Why did you think we'd want to see this? This isn't fun. Give him like a moment of heroism. I don't know. I guess he's fights. Right. He has one fight um, that he he I does all right in against some Russian power plant guards. But let's get on to Supergirl. That's there's some interesting stuff there too. Keep yeah. keep going. When Barry forgets that General Zod attacked the day after he got his powers, shift like gears sort of into a Supergirl remember. rescue mission. Briefly, <laughs> Sasha Cow comes to save the day, both in the movie and outside of it. Since Ezra was presumably locked in the WB water tower for the entire press tour, in this brand new take on a Kryptonian, a grim, tortured soul who questions whether humanity is even worth fighting for. Oh, right. Well, this time, baby Soup's got snuffed out in his crib, so it's even grimmer. The infant did not survive. <laughs> So strap in. So pause. Mostly Michael Shannon, I mean, giving the, it twenty percent. <laughs> yeah, there, there was the. Oh my God, that was the most zoomed-in performance. Yeah, he said. <laughs> did you see? He did an interview where he's like, ah, I don't know. They had me come back for a few days. I can't connect to this. Oh, he anymore. he dropped a couple, uh, uh, some shade about this. Where he's yeah, saying he, like, he, well, the, the Man of Steel, like there was something going on with the character. In this one, I'm more of like just there to kind of move things forward, <laughs> kind of move the plot forward. Um, but yeah, Sasha Cal, I, I thought she was, there's there's something interesting going on there. Like they had a good start. Like, okay, what if Superman, what, what if it was his cousin uh, and she uh, was like kept in a cage instead of, you know, grown up in, in the old uh, Pa Kent farm and like how that would change her. Like that's a good origin story for a grimmer, a grim dark Superman or Supergirl or Superwoman or whatever. And uh, they just didn't give her anything yeah, they didn't play with the concept really. She was just like pissed off. She goes out in the sun. She tries to fight Zod. She dies. Yeah, it, it, again, we, we we've said it before. Like this whole movie is like obviously six ideas for Flash movies grafted awkwardly onto one another. And and yeah, I, I mean, this one probably would have been one of the better ones. Like the the idea of him teaming up, like Batman, Flash, and Supergirl teaming up to repel an alien invasion. Sure, why not? I, I could have watched that. She's doing fine. Like, it seems like a, a cool take on the character, but it's such an afterthought in this movie. That mission is like just this one little part of this larger framework. It doesn't really get a lot of development on its own. It's hard to really invest in her or that character or what's going on because it's, we know that it doesn't matter. This is just one of many realities Barry's going to run in and out of. And there's no real stakes to this fight. And it doesn't, ultimately matter so yeah i mean like it, it it's it's certainly not on her fault or the character or anything but it there's not really that much here to hang your hat on when yeah all and it's just like they give her a villain's origin story like they give her every reason to be on zod's side so it was it just was strange that she's i felt like the plot said that she had to be good right. <laughs> so she was and there's, um, just, like, there's so little to it. I mean, she's got, you know, two or three kind of quickie scenes and it's it's, yeah. it's sort of barely even a character. Yep. Oh, well, next reboot. If we didn't already know Kara Zor-El, if Supergirl wasn't a pre-existing concept, you'd have no, you'd have, you know, no context for her whatsoever just based on this movie. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, I think that's all we're getting, which is a shame because this would have been the one thing I kept from the flash <laughs> but all right uh, it's multiverse anything can happen uh let's keep going it had film that looks like it was rendered on a gamecube with the least realistic baby since glenn eastwood's prop guy took a sick day featuring monstrous digital stand-ins <laughs> uh, 
huge balls of ghoulish fan service for 40 year olds and the first Hollywood action climax set entirely on a Halo 3 map. You know, I'm starting to think all of Warner Brothers is an elaborate tax write-off now, like the producers. Under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. Or Infinity mm -hmm. Train, or Bad Girl, or Phase 5, or Star. So yeah, pause. I don't think, I, I, I think to the contrary, they actually expected The Flash to be a billion dollar movie, which shows you the instincts yeah, of I mean, people in charge right now. Yeah, I mean, all of this is working on, you know, 2018 math. When when all of these movies were coming out, they were juggernauts, you know, one after another, all because people were really into the franchise and the storytelling, you know, the long form storytelling. I just think we're in a very different cultural moment right now. And people yeah. want, you know, they, they want more interesting, special, like, oh, I'm going to go out to a theater. It's got to be something unique and, and you know, interesting that's, uh, that works on its own. But the effects. And then um, I can take a picture of myself with the screen in the background and annoy everyone around me so everyone on Instagram knows that I saw it. Right. The, the, the effects, though, we, we kind of glossed over that because they are, the, are maybe my biggest takeaway from the film. And I know that these places are incredibly overworked and underpaid and like pushed to their absolute limit. Right. But then the director came out and said, no, that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this is what we need to talk about. This idea that, that oh, no, they're supposed to look distorted. Like, sure, yes, Barry's in the, he's, his world is warped and distorted by the time field. And, and, and we all get that. We all get that. Nobody's confused about why there's like lights and weird shimmer and whatever. But there's no excuse. It just, it just looks bad. It, it looks, it looks half rendered like if that's your visual aesthetic come up with a different visual aesthetic like <laughs> that's not an excuse like oh it looks bad on purpose like well then make it look good on purpose what yeah. are you doing it's a movie we we're actually talking about um the uh, last week about it's andy machete right yes like how so. he was the he was the cleanup guy for it chapter two right well it i mean he he worked on both chapters but it was it was Corey fukunaga was directing the hit movies and then only did one and then there was you know two had, had some development issues and whatever and then yeah andy machete managed to like come in and clean up and get the movie out on time on you know relatively on budget i guess or whatever and then he did that again it, like they had you know 12 different directors attached to various points and he kind of came in got whether good or bad got a movie finished and releasable and out you know, so like he's, yeah. he's he's becoming that guy. Like the so, wolf. he's been, re but he's been rewarded. We we're trying to figure out why he's been given, you know, a new Batman movie and why everybody's right. so high on him because it's like he's like the wolf in Pulp Fiction. Like yeah. you've made it, you've made a huge mess of things, and he will come in and yeah. just like get it done and get. He's it gonna out the Michael door. Clayton your project and like scrape together this disaster and get something <laughs> releasable together so you can move forward and save face. Exactly. I, I mean, I really do think that on some level he's becoming like a fixer kind of director. Yeah. That's uh, a real gig like that. You need a guy like that, you know? That's right. That's right. And and, and another reason why I would love a, um, like a, either a docu-series or a dramatization of, you know, the making of The Flash oh, yeah. more so than The Flash right. itself. I used to know when I worked at the video store, we had a guy, I won't give his name because I don't know if he'd appreciate that. We used to have a regular customer who came in and he worked for Disney, Walt Disney Pictures, but he, he never like wrote a movie himself. He was the last guy in the line. So like when something like Snow Dogs and they'd have to rewrite it a bunch of times. And then Cuba Gooding Jr. comes in and he wants to rewrite a bunch of times. Like the last guy, this was the last guy on the line who would take everybody else's notes and like stitch it all together Ugh. and come up with like a coherent <laughs> yeah. beginning to end screenplay. And that was his whole job. And he did it for like every Disney live action movie. Wow. And that so explains why they're all so good. <laughs> yeah. So that's like Andy Machete's like the last director on the line. He takes everybody else's ideas like, oh, we got to get rid of this thing and not enough time for Supergirl. We gotta, I, need, I need three more days with Michael Shannon. And he comes out with a releasable finished product. Yeah. I mean, from that perspective, it is a miracle that that anything exists, that anything comes together. When when these movies are true Frankenstein monsters, these these giant corporate things that are like, made out of the, the worst ideas of 18 different people, uh, half of them film executives, and somebody at the end of the day has to get from A to B to Z. Yeah. Um, and, and that's that's a success. Isn't and it? I feel like you can you can sort of tell watching this what a what a mess it was and how much work he had to do to make like, OK, well, we've got this 20 minute segment here. <laughs> 
it does not match this 20 minute segment here. What, what goes here to make this part go into this part? And like, that's, that's not easy to do. No. I'm not saying um, it makes a good movie, but <laughs> right. it, it happened. It got done, you know? It's, I was just reading about uh, like Christopher Nolan having to like convince so many people at Warner Bros. Like why he did everything in, in Batman Begins. Right. Um, and it's yeah, just he, like. He, he sent them like edited together montages of other movies to show them why their notes were wrong. I yeah. read that. They would be like, see? <laughs> God, it's brutal. Um, all right, let, let's wrap this up. The perks of being a wall facer. Beers, beers, beers. Naked and afraid. Let's do the time warp again. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Something to do with the Flash, I think. Been there, <laughs> done that. I am Sasha Fierce. Nap before Zod. What exactly would you say it is you do here? E2 Mama, I'm dead. West, <laughs> side story. Superman, the quest to rest in peace. Face oh, looks off. Galga cameo. Curry worst. And this is what a $200 million movie looks like now, I guess. I can't believe they did it again. The flop. Heads. <laughs> Floating heads. If three Flashes, three Batman, four Kryptonians, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman can drive ticket sales, Warner Brothers is going to need a new hero to save the box office. Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. Bingo. Well, there you go. I, I, I think that... So we've got Aquaman 2, we got Blue Beetle and Aquaman 2, and that'll and then the, the James Gunn stuff is next. So hopefully we'll get a breather. Um, yeah, 2025 is Superman Legacy. So for the next year, we've only got like these kind of two wrap it up projects for the next year and a half, other than TV. I mean, obviously there's lots of TV, but like yeah. movies. Uh, yeah. Live action. Obviously there's animated movies, but but yeah. And then and then 2025 Superman Legacy, we restart with the whole new no ho hang. Oh, but don't forget uh the other verse is um, you know, uh Joker 2. Well, right. Uh, there's still there's still all these standalones, Joker 2 and then R Bats, whatever they're working on next for him. There's that yeah. penguin show that they're doing. I guess filming got interrupted by the strikes, but Colin Farrell's at least partway through filming that penguin show. Yeah. Well, I think a year or more off while they kind of rethink and get their ducks in a row is just enough time for Zack Snyder to come back. You know it's in the works. This has all been uh, a big, big machination, a, a twist ending that Nolan did you, could write. Did you see Barbie? The the Have you seen yes, the, the film Barbie? The, the, the yes. incredible Zack Snyder joke they managed to sneak in there? One of the highlights yeah. of the film, I thought. Um, uh, I will, t I, we'll, we'll, we'll movie fight that one, um, later is, <laughs> is the, the Godfather one. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that one later. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. <laughs> but, I, uh, I get you. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's, uh, that's that. Thank God. Um, oh man. <laughs> rough. Tie a bow on flash for a long time. Um, thank y'all for watching. I, guess, I don't know. There's, oh, something there's more to say. These, sorry. There's something about <laughs> these movies. They're, they're just like. They, they look gross. I don't know. This one and Ant-Man, like, I, they're literally, like, nauseating. I don't like the way they look. There's something that makes me uncomfortable about looking at them. Am if they I don't alone? work as, a, I mean, yeah, if they don't work as visual spectacle, you're you're left with just the plot and the and the sheer, uh, just, a character is on the screen that I recognize. That's all there is to them without, yeah. like, good action. That's all that's left, and that's it's not enough like, these yeah, days. Mary running through the, the chrono The bowl. running looked bad. Running, the running how do you get bad. the running to look bad? But then you're seeing these, like, plastic, fake, like, human faces that are sort of, like, too, ex too much expression. They're all kind of glossy. It's like Polar Express or whatever, and it's just like, I just don't like it. I don't know. There's something I can't even describe. It's visceral. I just don't like it. Yeah, I think that they were onto something, even though it looked ugly, uh, was the baby shower is like, OK, so this you're doing like a Looney Tunes movie where he's right. Roadrunner. And it's like I'd like have him running into things that uh, somebody Zod has painted to look like a tunnel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's well, so, I mean, like it's actually not. Wanda, there's that joke where they run over the two little dogs and they're like flattened on the yeah. sidewalk. and. They needed to redo that. They, they they reshot that because the original focus group audiences, they made it look too realistic and audiences freaked out over the dead dogs. And so I think it was that. Like, if you had the babies look too real, we would have a, a moment, like everybody would tense up. Like, oh, baby. Yeah. But you have to make them look kind of cartoonish so it's funny. But they made I noticed on my rewatch is that, um, that uh, nursery 
worker or I don't know what, what type of nurse uh, that is, but she, she's going out uh, with the baby and she chucks that baby out the yeah. building. Like she's on her way up and she's like, <laughs> well, she's going to need her arms free to brace for her own impact. Got it. Think Got about it. it. Yeah. Uh, maternal instincts, not, yeah. not the strongest with that one. She, that she tosses that baby hard. That's a uh, work baby. That's not her baby. <laughs> that's a work baby. That's, that's a, a good work point. Baby. That's a good point. Uh, all right. So, uh, well, we're, we're going to move on to the next section of, uh, of outtakes and uh, Q and a, but, um, not before that happens, but after that happens, you should definitely check out our, uh, ode to character actors, our musical, uh, our musical guide that's on, um, yeah. on this channel that came out yesterday that we thought was just a fun thing to do. So, uh, so hope you enjoyed that. And we were watching something where there were a lot of notable, that notable guy, guys actors in it. and it, it, that's what prompted the idea. I feel Yeah. Like. Yeah. Um, so please, uh, if you enjoy stuff like that, like we like to sprinkle in some fun things in between us trailers. So we, we have some more ones uh, along those lines coming soon <laughs> that, that we'll see if we can pull off. Um, and yeah, yeah. So check that out and then uh, come right back here. So let's watch some outtakes if we got them. But after the tragic loss of Gal Gadot's dialect coach. Not every problem has a solution. But after a tragic loss caused by mom spaghetti. Starring, we got a runner, mother boy, we need to talk about Ezra, young Barry, better than Ezra, let's get paid, bad daddy, Krypton currency, Ron Livingston, I presume, paper girl, scoops McMean, sea drunkies, DC's kingdom dumb, dumb and dumber, when Barry met Freud, <laughs> And back to the drawing board. <laughs> the slider butt. Got a very prominent ass in that. Yeah, that's true. That wasn't mine, but I'm assuming that's <laughs> yeah, sure. refers to. All right, let's go on to uh, the Q&A. So Bruins fan 1144, how did Warner Brothers convince Tom Cruise to endorse this movie so strongly? He needs to get his Satan levels checked out. He is not clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I it's pr my, probably my, he just loves cinema so much that he'll encourage anyone to see anything in, in a theater, right? I, I think there was definitely, whether it was official or not, there seemed to be like a, everybody was going to help promote everybody else's movie this summer. Like everybody kind of recognizes it's a joint effort. Hollywood's got to come together and sell people on going to the theater. So, you know, Greta and Margot got their tickets to Oppenheimer. And I think, I think it was part of that spirit of everybody was just going to go out and support everybody else's stuff. Plus, Tom just, he's not that discriminating. Tom just loves movies. I, yeah. I, I feel like Tom loves everything he sees on the big screen. He's like, really psyched about pretty much everything he does. He just, he just has a good time in the theater. Yeah. Um, so we have two questions from Frog Eater and Al Patrickson uh, imploring us to do um, the Clone Wars TV show uh, no, on his trailer no, for Ahsoka, Ahsoka. And I don't, want to i have other we have so many other things that are coming out to do we will don't don't get it twisted we will but i think it's going to take mean, longer than three weeks because yeah. we have next week's and then the week after that is we can't miss and then uh we're working on other projects that are also coming out and it's like that it's just a long show it's right? long I, 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 it's not that i hate it so much it's just long that's 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 all it's it's doing multi-season tv shows like that is like a whole huge thing and yeah, I, don't want I think, to. you know, sometimes we're able to bring in people to help with the with a yeah. TV show like we did for Doctor Who and stuff like that. <laughs> Doctor like, Who was not even remotely possible. Come on. That's been on for a thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> Before we they that invented up. TV, they were making Doctor Who. Yeah, I'll see what uh, Mr. Merle's up to. I'll kick the tires on that. And uh, maybe we can get a get a ringer to, to start working on Clone Wars because um, the next we'll do it. But not, it's not going to happen in the next three weeks. <laughs> But you know, but, it's, it's never enough. We'll do it, and then immediately it'll just be like, "Now do rebels!" Like we'll never, we'll, just, <laughs> we'll never get away. We'll never get free. Well, what about Ken Napsok? Maybe he's a. Ooh, but that's, that's a so, great idea. He would be great. He would kill it. Yeah. But we need to at least watch enough of it to like to to. Put I mean, it I've seen the... a lot. You have not. You haven't seen Clone Wars. I've seen a bunch of it. No. I've seen all of it, but I've seen a lot. Of it. Yeah. It's in in discussion. We'll discuss. Um. All right. So. Uh. Aaron Every Matthew. time a new Disney Plus Star Wars show comes out, there's a list of here's the thousand Clone War episodes you have to watch just to catch up. <laughs> You're not going to know who Bo Katan is. <laughs> Jim one asks uh, if we got an extended cameo from Henry Cavill in the Flash, would it have improved the movie or just rubbed salt in the wounds? Uh, uh, I don't know if any single cameo could have improved this. I do think that 
the entire film looked like his mouth um, from the Whedon cut of Justice League. <laughs> like they pointed to the mouth and said, we want everything to look like that. So I don't I think mean, it would have been good. I mean, he's in this in the same way that all the other cameos are in it, in that he, he's there in the Chronicle, like. Yeah, his like injustice uh, yeah, video like, game looking, looking body is charging out. Yeah, looking looking mucusy, and uh, but that's the but that's that's all Christopher Reeves' cameo is, or Helen Slater's cameo, or Nicolas Cage. So like, if we're considering that a cameo, he cameos. Yeah. Like, like yeah, I, would it have been nice to see him like in context as Superman as part of the story? Sure, but like, it would have been nice to see Michael Keaton's Batman in context as part of the story as well, but not this time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Pat Magana asked you, Lon, um, now that we're halfway through 2023, what's this year's best red notice? Ooh, what is this year's number one? That's a great question. I'm going to pull up my list just so I don't. I was going to say ghosted was, ghosted was, uh, was a red notice. Yeah. Ghosted is, is probably my pick. Yeah. I I think, I think we're going with ghosted. I think that's the the most red notice film of this year. There have only been, there have been fewer this year than, than last year, but yeah. Wow ghosted good good lord <laughs> just and it was it was so like it hit it exactly on the nose like you know there's that, that like globe trotting but you don't really ever get a sense for different places it's just like we're in eight different locations so ghosted there's like one scene where chris, chris evans runs up a runs up a mountain and we spin the camera around and then there's just a little subtitle kyber pass like that's the most red noticey thing there could possibly be yeah no we're in the kyber pass folks look how <laughs> sandy it is Okay, off to the next location. That's going on the red notice bingo card for sure. It's <laughs> yeah. Kyber Pass. Kyber uh, Pass. Do, they, do we swing by the Kyber Pass? Yeah. Uh, Slavaton Rock asks, is there someone from the Snyder era that you would bring into Guns DC? Oh, I mean, I, listen, I, I like a lot of those. I think I think the best thing Zack Snyder did overall in, in, in his time was casting. Like, the casting's really good, and I, I like a lot of those people, so... Yeah, there's there's a bunch. There's a, there's a bunch I'd bring over probably. Yeah, they're all they're all great. Jeremy Irons. Um, mm-hmm. I, even well, that... I don't know. I don't love Jeremy. It, it, it's he's it's like too. I don't know. He, he's not. He doesn't feel like a butler to me. He feels like <laughs> Bruce Wayne's like project manager or something. Like he's I never ten... really been a. Yeah, there's he's pretty I want low on the butler more, spectrum. Yeah, yeah. I want ten percent more butling from from Jeremy Irons. He's always just like the he's like the guy in the chair. I'm like, no, no, he's got to occasionally be dusting something in the background. That's just, that's just, that's just part of the Alfred story. <laughs> you must occasionally dust. Yeah. Uh, let's I see. I think Ru- Russell Crowe as, as uh, Jor-El was so good. I might, if you ever, if we ever need a Jor-El in the gun verse, I think you, hard to do uh, that. He gave the best speech in the entire Snyder verse, I think. Yeah, um, I really you know, like that. Join me in the sun. Um, all right. So James Bunt says, what movie should be the poster child for insider lying about how good the movie is? Mm. I can't remember many other instances. I'm sure they're out there of like, f- not fake hype, but, but uh, a campaign where everybody, they somehow get everybody to tell you that this is the best movie they've ever seen. And, it, yeah. and it's not. Oh. Hmm. I don't remember marketing campaigns quite like that, but this was, this was very yeah. wide ranging. People are bringing up um, that they got uh, Hideo Kojima to chime in about how great it was. Uh, James Gunn, obviously, saying this was amazing. And yeah, Stephen King, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so rapid fire ones. Ben Zaiten, are you excited for the Meg Two? Yes, yes, I am. You know, I did not really like Meg One. I found it sort of underwhelming based on how fun the premise sounded. But Meg Two is Ben Wheatley. Did you know this? Yeah. The, the yeah. guy who did like Free Fire. And, I'm excited uh, for Meg Kill Two. I think, and, I think Meg Two is going to surprise surprise some people. Uh, I mean, um, I have no insight in England. <laughs> yeah, and Ben Wheatley doing it makes me think there must be something really cool and interesting about it, or he wouldn't do it. You know? Yeah. Uh, and then we'll end with this Reynard City Update channel. Uh, what universe would you prefer to live in? The one where stovepipe hats are always in fashion or the universe where custard creams are currency? I would go with the stovepipe hat always in fashion because I wouldn't want to have to carry like a pocket full of cream anytime I, I wanted I, to pay for something. Can I, I feel like this might be a UK term. Is that, what is a custard cream? I'm assuming it's some type of disgusting British food that's like a slop. Yeah. Like I know what custard is and I know what cream is and they seem like they're the same thing. So calling using both. Yeah, it's, words, it's what I thought it would be. It's, it's just a big thing of slop. 
um, sweet, sweet and slop, I'm sure. Uh, or well, no, it's a, it's a, it's a cookie or a biscuit, if you will, maybe. A, cu a custard cream. I, I don't want to answer unless I know what it is. A custard I'm just gonna cream. rock. I'm just gonna go full. Uh, oh, it's 2000. pastry, pus pastry cream. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just like a filling that you would get in like a pastry, like a, a okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Still pipe hats. Cream as currency is, is a mess. Did you ever see, what was that comedy special uh, where it's John Early, I think, and, and the, they're in a universe where. Oh yeah. They, what do they have to pay with? Currency is melted caramel. So melted caramel. Yeah. Like scalding every, melted caramel. That's everybody's amazing. walking That's around so with good. these like scales <laughs> and like heat lamps so they can melt their caramel to pay for things. That's what this sounds like. That's great. Yeah. Check that out if you haven't. Um, <laughs> You never had a steampunk phase on? I can imagine you in a stovepipe hat. <laughs> no, I don't. W would it kill you to laugh with Kate Berlant and John Early? That's the comedy special. Yeah, it's on check that out. Um, so yeah, you'll catch Lon and I in a dirigible with with two stovepipe hats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and monocles, and I'll I'll have to do that that handlebar thing with my mustache where you Perfect. curl it up. Uh, good times. So it's time to uh, leave you with the clue um, for next week's on his trailer. As we said, it's one of the three worst superhero things, um, certainly of the calendar year. Um, but it's it's an, a top 10 for me, all timer, just in terms yeah. of how bleh it is. Um, and uh, you can't That's be right, I didn't like it, and I hope it burns in hell. <laughs> my but you can't be sure exactly what it is next week. Oh, who's to say what it is? But you'll probably guess, because it's not very good. Uh, that's your clue. Uh, we'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>